Hi everyone, today on this absolutely windy, rainy, awful day, but uh, awful day, but still a wonderful swim for me this morning. So it is always really interesting to swim in the rain. So, um, okay, so today, today on Ask Finola How, which is our lovely weekly uh, journey into the questions of real questions from real entrepreneurs, okay? So, Today is episode uh, 19, and our question from a real entrepreneur today is, how small should a niche be? So, as always, great questions. They're always great questions from great entrepreneurs. So let's get stuck in, okay? So what I want to do is share with you what I was asked, okay? And it was, um, I'm launching something new, and I'm looking at the customer for that. I'm trying to niche down to that one person who I'm calling Jennifer, which is always a really good idea to name them, just to say to you. So I'm concentrating on female entrepreneurs in Ireland. And my question is, how small is small? Okay. Am I getting Jennifer down to one person, one family, one thing? And am I selling to her or am I selling to a thousand people out of a possible two million? As you add on different aspects to Jennifer, for example, she's married, that makes a niche smaller. Do I keep going all the way down until I'm talking to a pool of 50 people in Ireland? Great question. So let's kind of focus in on a couple of things I want to say to you. And two things kind of got mixed up in here um, just to give some feedback, okay? And it's a very understandable thing to get mixed up. And the thing that I want to say to you is the size of your niche, looking at the size of your niche and profiling the customer you want to speak to are two different things. So it is a really good idea to really think when you're customer profiling, thinking about the person and naming them. It's something I advocate. But this is where the kind of commonality um, parts, because when we look at the size of the niche, we're looking at the numbers, we're looking at quantity, making sure that we have enough quantity in the marketplace that we can have a business from. When we're scaling down to Jennifer, to personifying and humanizing that person, we're wanting to bring them so firmly in our mind that we're actually focusing them as one, you know, one person that can represent all of the attributes of an entire niche. And when the purpose of that is to hone your messaging, not to hone your niche. Okay, so two different things. The size of the niche and honing your messaging are two different things. So we will for today, focus on the size of the niche to make sure that you have enough of a market, enough of a target ma market with a customer in mind for that niche to make sure that you have a business that makes you money, that generates results, that keeps you in business, gets you the life that you want. You know, this is what it's about, getting the life that you want. Okay, so my first, so if, hopefully that makes sense to you, okay? So let me know if you have a question, right? So let's look at size of niche. Okay, but just let me re reiterate that. I'm kind of really wanting to reiterate that. The size of the niche and the focus of your attention of making them feel like one human are two different things. For the size of the niche, we look at the numbers, the quantity. For our messaging, we look at the individual who represents that niche and they're two different things. For today, we will look at the size of the niche, okay? So, I have said to you already that naming the niche is really good, and I've told you why. So, the first step is always to take this step, and I tell you this all of the time, as you know, is to profile the customer right from the very beginning. Your starting point has to be kind of distilling down. I always do this exercise of where, you know, do a brainstorm of all the possible customers for what I have to offer distilling that down to three or four so that you're not only focusing on one niche, that you have options. I always like to have options. It allows you to pivot, allows you to grow, allows you to create things that work for you. So make sure you do that work first. I'm assuming you've profiled your customer first, okay? Because that tells us that you know who you're speaking to, which means you can find out the numbers. When you, fo when you build that customer profile, you have the tools you need to find how, how big that market is, okay? So, and do about three customer profiles. Think about three, not one. 
When you're thinking about specific products, you're probably launching a specific product to a specific customer. But for your business, think of having about three, okay? Now, here's what I want you to think about. The size of the niche is determined by the size of the business you want to build, nothing else. So when we work and get strategic, one of the first things that I do with people on the program is I get you to think about what's the size of business that you want. This moves you from the space of passively receiving a business or passively, you know, receiving customers to actively choosing the business you want to have, the customer that you want to serve with the product you want to serve them with. Okay. So your first step, if you take a moment now, because it's powerful, if you take a moment now and you think about the business that you have now, right? Think about the business that you have now and write down what your level of turnover, your level of sales is now for a calendar year, for your financial year. Write the number down. Take a moment and write the number down. And let me know when you have it done, okay? Write that number down. It doesn't matter the size of the number. I don't care the size of the number. It's simply benchmarking what you have now. The next step I want you to do is think of your business in five years time, right? This is where you dream a little, okay? And I want you to write down the size of the business in sales in five years time. So if we're saying that our year end is 31st of December, 2021, what are you thinking you will have taken in a year's worth of revenue this year, okay? And then five years down the line, what is the size of the business you want then? What is the turnover? What are the sales levels? in five years time. So if we think about our starting point as 2021, so we want to know 2022, 23, 24, 25, 26. In 31 December, 2026. And I know all of you are gonna feel uncomfortable because entrepreneurs like to be in the doing, like to be in the now. But for you to create a better now, you need to dream, okay? Because if you stay in the now, you will repeat how you currently work and won't change that much in it. Whereas if you think five years out, you will make a plan for being bigger than you are, more successful than you are, and you have a chance of meeting that, okay? So what is the business you're in now? And in five years time, what is the business in turnover levels that you want to have, okay? So say it's 10,000 euro now, 100,000 euro now, or whatever it is now at the end of 2021, what are your turnover levels? What is your sales levels in 2026? Okay, take a moment. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is map that space from here to there. So what seems reasonable? This is where it's often challenging to figure out what we want, okay? So say you're at 10,000 now and in five years time in 2026, you want to be at 100,000, okay? So this is ballparking, right? Because we have no evidence yet, but we need to draw a line in the sand. It is really useful to draw a line in the sand for every aspect of your business and then seek the truth behind it, to verify it with the numbers, with reality. But for now, we dream a little, we estimate, we guesstimate. So say you're at 10,000 now, you want to be at 100,000 in five years time, or you're at 100,000 now and you want to be at a million in five years time. The answer to me is irrelevant. The answer to you is relevant to the life you want to live and what you're willing to do to get those numbers. OK, that's the important piece. So you see your five years ahead. I want you to tell me what the growth looks like. So in year three, do you think you'll have made it halfway? So if you'll have made it halfway, are we saying in year three, you're at 50,000? Are you at? So if your target was 10,000 now and 100,000 in five years time, in year three, what are you at? Are you at 60,000? And does that mean then, if we backfill, that in year two, that you need to be at 30,000? And that in at the end of the first year, that you need to be at 20,000? Do you understand where I'm going? I'm wanting you to build this path, this sales path first, of what it is that your business needs to look like. You have got to see it so that you can match the niche to that number. That's why we do this exercise. So take a moment 
and do this exercise for the next five years. Remember, this is you in this moment, in this Ask Finola How, episode 19, writing that number down. There is no basis for this yet until we get to the next stage, but you must, I advocate for you that you choose to match the business that you want with the sales levels you want, okay? Okay, fill that out for five years. It's tough. Do it from gut, do it from what makes sense of what you want, what you start this business for in the first place. It's to help other people, but it's also to have an income to have a financial reward for what you do, okay? To create the life that you want, okay? So let's now assume that you've done that exercise, that for every single year you have articulated, you have clarified the sales levels that you want to achieve in each of those years. So that you know, it actually is a weight off you because you're, allowed, you're giving yourself the gift of time to achieve the things you want, okay? So it's not that I have to make a million now. It's no, no, I make a million in five years. Okay, so you take the weight off, but you've drawn a line in the sand. And now what we want to do is to make that line true. Okay, so we're back to our niche, right? So here's my first point for you. You have figured out what you want to earn and you figured out who the target customer is. And I presume at this point, but this will change just to give you a warning. You have also figured out what your product is or your services that you're offering to that customer, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to know, so say for example, your product costs 10,000 euro and you have a target of 100,000 euro. That means then that you need to sell 10 products to get your 100,000, okay? So it's this simple maths formula we're trying to do, okay? so. What we want to do is to think about Jennifer that was in our example from our real question from a real entrepreneur. And we want to focus down on Jennifer is a female entrepreneur. She might be married. Focus on what's matter, what matters here first. She's a professional. She's in such and such an industry. It's all of these things, all of these questions that you ask as you profile the customer. You need to do the numbers. How many of them are there? So we want to know how many Jennifers are there? How many Jennifers that are a female entrepreneur with uh, two kids, with, with teenage kids or kids who are in school or all of those things, when you profile the customer, you need to find out how many of them are there, okay? So, and then you start to realize then, if I know there are 500,000 and I only need to, to target 200 of them, well then that's possible, okay? What we're trying to do is simplify the maths in this, simplify the steps in this in a very kind of unemotional way and, then, and not to get too connected into it because fear comes in, okay? So just to be very simple about it, knowing you know who your customer is, now I want you to tell me how many of them are there. And you find these answers in simple market research by looking at things, by starting with simply with Google, looking at kind of CSO figures, central statistics office in the country that you're in, all of these things to find out how many, how do you check some, so great question from the RT Fox. Do you check something like CSO for that? Yes. So CSO is central statistics office. There's one in every country. You can find out who your customer is and how many of them are there. There will not be exact responses. The science of market research is not exact. If we pursued the exactness of it, we would never sell anything. We would spend too long in the market research space. You need to do, great, I'm glad you got the answer, RT Fox, fantastic. So you need to do enough research to make sure that there is enough of a market for you. So first we decide, this is my customer, how many of those customers are there, okay? That's the first question. And you'll know instantly whether, oh, there's not enough of them around, <laughs> or, or I have plenty, but I need to poke a little bit more, right? So you may have a product that's for a wide range of people. So it could be parents of kids of ages between five and 12, or you could have a target market that is medical device industry, um, 
such and such a department. So what we need to do is focus in on how many of them are there and what they need. Then the next thing we need to look at is what's my conversion rate? What is it possible to convert? So say, for example, I have a really good conversion rate of working with my medical device industry people if I convert um, 50% of the time. So if you need to get 10 customers and you convert 50% of the time, then you need to speak to 20 customers to get the 10 you want. Do you get what I mean? So that's in that business to business space. In a wider space where you may be advertising on something like Google or Facebook ads, it's a completely different ball game. We've got a wider number of people to look at who are much more, you know, we're much more human. It's business to consumer space. And the numbers around here is one and a half to 2% conversion rate when you're looking at ads. So you need to factor that into the account, right? But that's when you're looking at ads for a cold audience. So first of all, we need to know that if you, you know from your conversion rate that you need larger numbers to convert those people because if it's only one and a half to 2%, you need larger numbers. So we're looking at the numbers we want to pay attention to is how many customers do we need? How much stuff do we need to sell? How many customers does that represent? How many customers are in the marketplace? What's the average conversion rate? Now that's a conversion rate for a cold conversion rate. So work with the cold because that's you being pessimistic, just for lack of a better way of saying it. Because the joy of the marketing peach is to warm your customers, to increase that conversion rate. But at the very least, know how many you want to reach. And if it's in that space that it's a wider audience where you need to target uh, 500,000 at any one point, if you're doing Facebook ads, so that you can learn your own conversion rate. That's part of this step is to learn your own conversion rate. And that's bringing consciousness to when I perhaps create a lead magnet to bring them into my list so that I can develop a relationship with them because that's the cheapest way for me to do ads then. And you learn more about your customer and your customer profiling gets better. So you do this lead magnet, you know that you just need, if you spend X amount, you will get 100 people signing up for your newsletter. At the next stage, what we want to know is how many do you convert from your newsletter to the next stage? So at each stage of your niche, you're looking at what, how do I convert? Where do I not convert? What's the message I'm missing here? How am I connecting with them? This is when, when you're into the conversion stakes, and I know we've gone outside of niche, but I kind of want to poke this at this with you. When you go outside of that, just the size of the market into how well do I convert, you start to pay attention to the one, the key message to that person that makes them know that you are right for them. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, to sum up for you to get you to think about this and really think, and just think of it one step at a time. Step one is what do I want to make, okay? Step two is who's the customer for that, okay? So what do I want to make in sales turnover, not to what do I want to make in terms of a product? How much sales do I want to make this year, next year, and for the next five years? The next question is, how many customers do I need to sell my product to to reach those levels in each of those years. So not only are you setting targets for your sales levels, but you're setting targets for the number of customers in each year. And so you're going, oh, okay, that's all I have to do this year, great. It's not all you have to do, but it takes a weight off you. Then the next step is, have I the right product for them? Do I know them well enough? And what's the average conversion right here? So how many people do I need to reach out to to bring them closer to me? The first step closer to me may be to download a lead magnet and the second step may be to convert them to some particular sale, okay? These are the questions that you need to ask. I just wanna check, have I got everything? Yeah, 
doing the five-year thing, just to reiterate this, doing this five-year thing makes you think beyond now, makes you realize you're playing a long game because you're in business for the long game. So it makes you know that if your niche is too small, then you can't make those sales. That's why you do the numbers. Your niche is always too small if you haven't got a big enough pool to choose from. That's the really important thing. So lastly, don't be afraid of the numbers, okay? And here are my questions for you in terms of knowing your numbers. What level of sales do you want to make? How much is your product or service that you're selling, okay? So that you can figure out how many customers you need to hit in each point. Then is, and then it's really understanding that target customer for you of who's going to buy this from you at this price, okay? How many of them are there? And then what are your conversion levels? What is possible for you to convert from that pool in each year? And then you ask yourself this question of, is this possible? And if this is possible, if this feels possible for you, then your niche is big enough. And your niche must be big enough in every single year, okay? Leave me questions or notes that you want to ask because this is a, an important one for you. And this has been Fanola Howard, Ask Fanola How, episode 19, Is My Niche Big Enough? Okay, have a great day, everyone. Take care.